All right, y'all, we are back with another video, and here we go again. Boy, the left is crying right now. You got Liz Cheney out here running her mouth. You got MSNBC, Joy Reid, them, all them over there crying just because, you know what I'm saying, the Supreme Court granted Donald Trump immunity, and then you got AOC, she threatened you know what I'm saying? To file papers on the Supreme Court. Now they saying that AOC then walked back what she said when she threatened SCOTUS. And now she's trying to walk it back. These people are ridiculous for what they are trying to do to Donald Trump. And now they mad. Because you know the whole time these courts been going against Donald Trump. Ain't none of the people on the left had nothing to say about that. When Judge Michonne them and Judge Ngora and them trying to make Donald Trump pay a half a billion dollar, all of them was over there laughing. The view, all of them just laughing. And soon as the Supreme Court sides with Trump, now all of them want to cry. They, 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 they all out here crying themselves a river. So we get straight to this one right here. This one come from Dr. Steve. He said, Donald Trump calls for a Liz Cheney treason tribunal. Tribunal. And uh, like I said right here, <laughs> Donald Trump said, okay, y'all want to go after me? Let me go after y'all then. Let me go after y'all. And like I said, now they out here crying. So we definitely finna get straight into it. Make sure y'all please hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. Shout out to everybody showing so much support. I really, really appreciate it. Shout out to the one that always watches the entire video. Thank you very much for that. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dive straight into this, y'all. Let's go. Liz Cheney and the Washington establishment are absolutely freaking out today as reports are coming out that Trump is threatening televised military tribunals against them. It's true. The legacy media is flipping out not just over the prospect of an imminent return of Trump, but fierce political retribution against his enemies. We're going to see the latest on what's really going on with our panic political class mm. and why in the end they only have themselves to blame for their own demise. Yep. Hey gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, your Patriot Professor, here to help you stay sane in these insane times. So make sure to smack that bell and subscribe. But also you guys know continues to soar as the result of a string of wins over the last several days. Trump himself is honing in on the message of once and for all draining the swamp. And that means, according to the legacy media, political retribution on his and America's treasonous enemies. Look at this headline from Drudge. Trump calls for Cheney treason tribunal. Hmm. Now, I don't know what's going on there with Drudge, whoever's running that side. I don't think it's Matt Drudge anymore, as I understand. I may be wrong, but whoever's running that site, Trump, uh, Drudge, of course, notoriously went radically leftist, radically anti-Trump, pro-establishment shortly after Trump's victory back in 2016. I don't mm -hmm. know who's behind it, but they seem to be radically pivoting back to their original pro-Trump stance. We'll see what happens here, but... The headline reflects the fact that Trump is indeed ratcheting up his rhetoric on crushing his corrupt political opponents once he wins, which is more and more shaping up to be a landslide. We'll get to that in a yep. mere moment. Yep. The polls are absolutely astonishing. You're going to love it. But the Democrats and the legacy media are freaking out because Trump apparently retruthed. That is, he reshared, he reposted this meme on True Social calling for military tribunals against Liz Cheney. And he also reposted another meme that has pictures of 15 former and current officials, such as Biden, Harris, Pence, Pelosi, McConnell. And it said in all capital letters, they're the ones that should be going to jail and not Steve Bannon. Wow. So Trump reposted that meme as well. And as a result of those two reposts, the far left activists disguised as journalists over at the New York Times absolutely flipped out, claiming that Trump, in reposting those memes, was, in their words, amplifying calls to jail top elected officials, even invoking military tribunals. Now, of course, what seems so utterly bizarre here with the Times headline and the panic that's being this, beginning mm -hmm. to set in among Democrat and Rhino establishment figures is the total and complete self unawareness that they're the ones who are jailing their political opponents. Exactly. Exactly. That was the entire point of the second meme. You obviously all know that yesterday Steve Bannon went to jail 
for doing precisely what Merrick Garland just did. He defied a congressional subpoena. Yep. Merrick Garland literally did the exact same thing that Bannon did. But in the case of Garland, it was defying a subpoena from a fully legit congressional oversight committee. Whereas with Bannon, it was defying a subpoena from a sham, blatantly illegal kangaroo committee that all started with the verdict against Trump and his cohorts yep. already in mind before the first hitting of the gavel, as it were. This is the irony that left us seem totally incapable of getting. They are the ones who are setting up the kangaroo committees. They are the ones who are arresting and jailing their political opponents. Yep. And don't forget Peter Navarro and all this as well. So all of this is to say that were Trump to go ahead with this, were Trump to follow through on his threats of political retribution, the irony is that the Democrats would only have themselves to blame for it, the establishment as a whole. This is what our political forefathers always understood. This is what every single previous political generation in this nation always recognized. Democrats and Republicans have always had a significant animus against one another, no yep. question. There's always been political hostility, but you always stop short of indicting your political opponents. You don't go there. Every one of our political forefathers understood that. The political animosity between the two parties can only go so far. The moment you begin indicting your political opponents, yep. you have unleashed the political equivalent of World War III. You've guaranteed mutually assured destruction. Because there's no way the opposing political party is going to sit around and not do the same to you. This is the Rubicon that the Democrats yep. crossed when they started indicting Trump. And it does look as if Trump is going to exercise at least some form of political retribution. And Dr. Steve is right, though. You see how they're trying to play victim, but yet they up here trying to put Donald Trump in jail. Look at this crap that Joe Biden is trying to do. He's signing off on this stuff. They want to send Steve. They just sent Steve Bannon into prison. Just sent him to prison. And like what Dr. Steve said, Merrick Garland did the same exact thing, but he's still out running around free. So they are around here locking up people, locking up, especially everybody that supports Donald Trump, especially on the Republican side, locking up everybody. And then when Donald Trump say he going to lock up somebody when he get in office, oh, we can't let Donald Trump get in office because he trying to lock up people. He trying to lock up Liz Cheney. He trying to uh, get Joe Biden. He trying to get Mary Garland. They sit up here and cry victim when they sit up here doing the same exact thing. This right here don't make no sense. This don't make no sense at all. Don't make no sense at all. Sitting around, just sent Steve Bannon to prison, but yet Garland get to run around free. Where's the, uh, where's the audio tapes at? Where's the audio tapes? And Jack Smith ain't even a special counsel. So they ain't going to lock up Mary Garland, but you're going to lock up Steve Bannon. Uh, this right here just don't make no sense. That's the reason why we're going to clean up these streets. We got to get Donald Trump back in office. We got to. We got to get him back in office. Because this stuff right here is just one-sided. They're making all this right here, just like that little interview Joe Biden did yesterday. Mad. He just upset and mad. Because Donald Trump was granted immunity by the Supreme Court. Now Joe Biden mad. Now the whole entire left uh, left mad. Oh, y'all going to let Donald Trump do this? Y'all going to let Donald Trump do that? But y'all was all happy and laughing when Donald Trump, you thought Donald Trump was going to have to pay that half a billion dollar fine when all when these uh, Biden judges, you know what I'm saying, was going after Donald Trump trying to lock him up. Y'all was all laughing over there, MSNBC, they over there having a good time, CNN, all of them having a good time, laughing. But when the joke's on them, now they want to cry victim. It, this right here just don't make no sense at all. Bution against the Democrats once he's elected. Yeah. And that is looking more and more likely by the day. But before we look at the polls, gang, remember I got a huge announcement coming. Many of you know I was away at a meeting in uh, Utah a few weeks back. And let's just say my team and I are working on something absolutely amazing. This would be one of the biggest 
positive changes to Turley Talks that will benefit you, my fellow courageous and loyal patriots, for years to come. Stay tuned for a big announcement tomorrow night. We're going to have a live stream to kick it all off, so make sure to tune in. You're going to absolutely love it. All right, let's check out some of the latest polls that are coming out, the post Debate polls, or better, the post devastation polls. Now, yeah, technically, um, in fairness, some of these polls that are coming out now were actually taken uh, before the debate. Many of them are showing a Trump surge that ironically was happening before the Biden meltdown, mm. such as this one. This is the latest from Deep Blue, New Mexico. Look at this. Trump is winning two of Biden in a state that hasn't voted for a Republican in decades. Wow. Trump is within the margin of error in New Mexico. Here was the shocker from New England that I showed you last night in our live stream. Take a look at this. This is the latest Anselm poll. See, the thing is, is that people know that Joe Biden is not fit to run, you know, to, to run for president. Obviously, they're saying that Joe Biden is not going to drop out because we kept hearing talks. Is he going to drop out for Hillary Clinton? Is it going to be Michelle Obama? Is it going to be Gavin Newsom? Because at this point, it really don't matter who it is. None of them is going to beat Donald Trump unless they try to pull off some kind of cheat, cheat some type of way or something like that. That's the only way. But none of them are not going to beat Donald Trump. And that right there is just what it is. Joe Biden is not fit. The man was mumbling, bumbling, fumbling all over the place. His opening statements, he was struggling. Donald Trump had to, you know, do a take two and look at him because he thought so he was going to fall out or something. He was falling asleep up there on the podium. That's the guy you think can run for another four years? Joe Biden? No. We definitely have to get Donald Trump back in office if we want to save this country because Joe Biden has destroyed it with these open borders, inflation. It's hard to buy a house. Groceries through the roof. Remember, we had them high gas prices. Just all type of stuff. Want to raise taxes. It, we, you, you can't live with Joe Biden. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't live with Joe Biden being president for another four years. There's no way. Got to get Donald Trump back in office. Trump is now beating Biden in freaking New Hampshire, 44 to 42. That coincides with some polling that we're getting out of Maine that shows Trump either winning by a point or two or within the margin of error with Biden again in a state that has not voted Republican in decades. And of course, that's all par for the course in state after state. Trump is now crushing it in Pennsylvania, where he's a mm -hmm. four-point lead. He's leading in all the swing states. He's tied in Virginia. He's tied in Minnesota. He's nipping at Biden's heels in New York, in New Jersey, in Washington, and Oregon. And now the national polls are coming out. And they're all showing the same thing. The latest to drop was the USA Today Suffolk poll that just came out this morning. Oh, it is Trump beating Biden nationally by four, 41 to 38. And of course, this just corroborates all the other national polling that's showing Trump just running away with it here. The latest Harvard Harris poll that just dropped last night. It has Trump up by six. That's head to head. When you factor in all five candidates, mm -hmm. it's Trump up by eight. Yep. And the latest post debate New York Times poll, pre debate, they had Biden up by two, 43 to 41. Now, after the debate, it's Trump up by seven, 45 to 38, a nine point swing to Trump. And that right there tells you everything you need to know who needs to be president, and that's Donald Trump. It tells you everything you need to know. Finally, the latest national poll from Atlas Intel. Atlas Intel is very good, very, very accurate polling. According to Atlas Intel, right now, national average, it's Trump now by up by over five, 45.5 to 40.3. Mm. So all this is to say, I think we all know why the left is absolutely freaking out yeah. today. The return of Trump, especially after last Thursday night, appears inevitable. Mm -hmm. And with it, a comparably inevitable coming political retribution. Here's your opportunity. Shout out to Dr. Steve for another great video. Like I said, uh, y'all let me know what y'all think about this. Uh, 
We don't have a problem with Trump going out to hit political opponents because you know why? The Democrats started it first by indicting Donald Trump, trying to take him off. I mean, you got to realize, they tried to take this man off ballots. They trying to put him in jail. He, it, it's been hard for him to campaign because he's been in these stuck in these cold courtrooms and these Democrats have been enjoying every bit of it. And the time Donald Trump gets some good news, all hell break loose with them. They want to threaten the courts. They want to, we can't let Donald Trump back in office. He's going to do, he, he, he's going to destroy this. He's going to destroy that. He's a threat to democracy. All these, all these lies, all these lies is exactly what they've been doing. So y'all let me know, do y'all think it's right for Donald Trump to go after his political opponent? Because I think he should. They going after him for no reason, trying to put him in jail trying to help Joe Biden out the best way they can. So, hey, that's that right there is my take on it. So, like I said, uh, y'all let me know in the comment section what y'all think about it. Shout out to the ones who watched the entire video. I appreciate all of you who did that. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch y'all in the next one.